Hi everybody, we're in the kitchen. I'm going into our dry goods cabinet. I'm gonna find some chickpeas. There we go. Chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Here we are. Now, what are we gonna make with this? We're making the hummus. And there's been a big debate. What's better? Canned chickpeas or chickpeas that you soak overnight, cook, and then make the hummus with yourself. So, we are going to do an experiment. I have my pot right here. We are going to make our hummus using the cooked chickpeas. And before, I'm getting a scissor, so I'm walking over here. I'm getting a scissor to open that bag. We are going to soak our chickpeas overnight in cold water. So I'm going to pour these into the pot first. And then I'm gonna cover it with cold water. Soak them overnight. Tomorrow I will cook them. I'll cook them with a bay leaf. Maybe a of garlic. I'm not sure yet. And then we will see whether or not there really is a taste difference. Okay? So I'm gonna pour these all in. This would be good if I had two hands to do this first, but I'm pushing. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna cover that. This goes in the garbage, I dropped one. We're gonna cover this with cold water and let it soak overnight. So, here we go. We're filling it up with the cold water. Now, the chickpeas, they're supposed to actually triple in size overnight. So, there's like maybe two inches of water over those chickpeas. That should be enough to let it soak overnight. So when I come in tomorrow, those should be tripled in size and then I'm gonna cook them and we will see. So this is an experiment. People usually prefer the canned chickpeas as opposed to soaking and doing this because um, it's a real time saver. And some people even think that this is much cheaper, but I think that if you calculate all the amount of time and energy and you have to pay for the propane or the gas to cook it, um, it might not be as much of a savings as people think. So, but certainly it could be a difference in taste. So we'll see, this will be a good experiment for me. Here we are, I'm back in the kitchen. Ta-da! Wow, look at that! They really did plump up. Look at that. They really, really... And look, you can tell how much they plumped up because the water level is way below. So those are our chickpeas. They soaked overnight, and now look how big and fat they are. Wow. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to have to boil them. We're going to have to boil them for a couple hours and cook them. So we're going to drain off this water. That's the soaking water. We're going to drain it off, and then we're going to add fresh water to it, a bay leaf, yeah, just, I guess, one clove of garlic, a bay leaf, and um, then we'll bring it to a boil. So I'll show you that in a second. What is this tool or piece of equipment? What is this? Have you guys seen it before? This is a colander. Okay, this is a colander. And how is it different from a strainer? Well, here's the strainer. Now, if you look at the strainer, see the tiny holes? All right. This the strainer is good when you want to strain something like rice, where the grains are small, okay? The colander, see it has big holes? See those holes? Grains of rice could go through that. So the colander is to strain larger objects, okay? So the strainer, we could use it, but since we have so many chickpeas to strain out, it's much better to use the colander, which has its own feet so it can stand in the sink. That way I have one hand to hold the pot and I can strain out all of the chickpeas, okay? We want to strain off that soaking liquid that it was in. Right, jiggle it around a little bit and you see now the strainer is also smaller than the colander. So physically it's smaller. So it might not have actually held all of those chickpeas. So it is good to have both of these tools in your kitchen so you can use them for their different purposes. Now I'm just gonna put these back in here and then I will add in the water, the bay leaf, and the clove garlic. We're gonna fill the pot 
so that the water, cold water, is about two inches over the chickpeas. All right, so that's about two inches. I don't know if you can see my finger in there. Okay, so that's a, a little long, just in case. All right, so we're gonna cover the soaked beans with about two inches of cold water. I have one clove of garlic, one bay leaf, and then we are gonna put this on the stove over medium high heat, bring it to a boil, and then we're gonna cook it for one and a half to two hours until the beans are tender and done. So that's gonna take quite a while. I'm gonna put the top on now to help it come to a boil quickly. Um, and then come back and show you what it looks like when they're done. Here we have our peas, chickpeas. They've been boiling for, oops, that steamed up. And they've been boiling for um, an hour and a half, almost two hours. I'm sorry. Okay, and as you can see, most of the water is boiled down. So I probably should next time add more water. But there is our bay leaf floating on the top and our garlic. And what I did throughout was I took a spoon and wherever that foam is, I would skim the top and remove the foam, all right, throughout the process of all the boiling. So I would do that. Now, this has been boiling long enough. I'm going to turn it off, turn off the heat, all right? I'm going to let that cool, and then I'm going to strain it again, and see how there's, like, this is the skin? That's the skin off of one of the chickpeas. So I'm going to remove those. Um, any skins that came off, I'm going to remove. Where I used to work, the water club, the chef actually would make everybody remove the skins off of all of the chickpeas uh, to get an actually very smooth, velvety tasting hummus. I'm not that particular, so that was my alarm to remind me to take this off the heat. So I'm going to let it cool. I'll strain it out, and I'm going to spread them out on a sheet pan so that they can cool. And then I will be ready to use them in our hummus recipe. We are now doing hummus. Othello is our book of the month and we're doing the recipe hummus. Hummus is a Mediterranean staple used in many different countries and Cyprus is a crossroads of the Mediterranean Sea. And so therefore on Cyprus, people eat tons of hummus. It is popular in Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Greece. Hummus is made with chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Here they are. And tahini, ground cumin, salt, lemon, garlic, olive oil. And it's very good. It's a dip and it can also be used as a meal. Um, I'm going to make the hummus kawama, which is a meal which has uh, ground beef cooked and on top of hummus and it's very hearty and really extremely delicious. And you can mix it with many different things. I'm sure you've seen the hummus section in the grocery store. Hummus has become very popular now. And you have hummus with um, pine nuts and roasted garlic, red peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, olives. So there's a whole bunch of different combinations nowadays and people really are enjoying it. So um, <clears throat> we have our tools here as well. We have our cutting board, our knife, our non-slip mat, measuring spoons and measuring cups. And we are gonna make this in our blender. So here we have our blender set up, ready to go, and we're gonna make that in there. Now, we cooked the chickpeas. These were dried chickpeas. We soaked them overnight and cooked them. And um, it was an experiment basically to see whether or not cooked dried beans versus canned beans. Now, canned chickpeas are usually a lot mushier they're not as firm. So the when you cook them yourself, they do stay more firm. And basically I wanted to see if there's a difference in the taste. I added a bay leaf and a garlic of garlic to the boiling water and, and some salt. And truthfully, I really could not taste that much of a difference. So um, they say canned beans cost more. It's cheaper to get the dried beans, but if you figure out the amount of time it takes you to prepare dried beans and cook them, you gotta pay for the propane, you gotta pay for the water or the gas, whichever. Um, to me, it doesn't seem like that's much of a saving. So 
canned chickpeas is perfectly fine. If you're gonna have chickpeas for a salad, let's say, or you're making fried chickpeas, definitely I would use bagged ones and cook them because I can control the doneness. See how firm this is? So if you're gonna fry these, I would rather use ones from the bag instead of the can because you want them firm. So now for our recipe, we want one can of garbanzo beans or chickpeas. And since we cooked a whole entire bag, how much is actually in a can? So I know the conversion is actually one and a half cups. So here's our liquid measuring cup and it's one and a half cups. We wanna fill it to this line with our chickpeas. So I'm just gonna fill it up and that'll be the same as one 15 ounce can of chickpeas drained and rinsed. So if you have the can, you're gonna drain and rinse them. And here we go, we have one and a half cups. All right, so we have that ready. Um, oh, also just some people are actually really particular about the texture of their hummus. So I'm not sure if you can see, but there is actually a skin on top of the garbanzo beans, chickpeas, this skin. So some people are so particular about their hummus and they don't want that skin in there that they literally shell the chickpeas after they've cooked. They literally spend the time to take that coating off of each chickpea. Now, I'm very particular about certain things, especially with pastry and my nuts, and, um, but I am not particular about this. That is the coating on the chickpea. Some people do take the time to skin it. That is something I would not do. Um, to me, that's a huge waste of time. This, if I just keep running the blender long enough, it's gonna pulverize all of that anyhow. So why not keep it in? I'm sure it has extra fiber, which uh, chickpeas are good for. So might as well keep it in and not waste it. So we have our one and a half cups of chickpeas ready to go. I'm gonna have to measure the olive oil off camera. So I need to get one clove of garlic, so I can do that with one hand. Um, this is a nice firm head of garlic. As you can see, the skin is tight, it's firm. So when you're shopping, you always wanna look for that. You wanna get a nice, and then break out a clove. If you like garlic, you can certainly add more than one clove. Uh, I'm not, I have a stomach problem, so I don't eat much garlic. Actually, I don't wanna eat any garlic at all, um, but I'll make this recipe for you guys with a clove of garlic so you can see. But for most people, they definitely wanna have garlic in it, and probably two cloves of garlic is fine. Um, for people who love love absolutely love garlic three big cloves of garlic would be great in this recipe and roasted garlic as i said would also be good so you could use roasted garlic to flavor it all right so that's our clove of garlic we have that and get rid of this now the tahini what is tahini it's ground sesame seeds this is an ingredient that is used commonly in the mediterranean uh, a lot of the times It's drizzled on top of things as well, like a shawarma kebab. You might see a sauce that has some tahini in it. Um, hummus is definitely one of the things that they use tahini in. And our lemon juice. So we're gonna cut our lemon in half with a paring knife on our cutting board. Ooh, I didn't put the non-slip mat down. So I don't have a camera person with me today, so I gotta do everything Hopefully I can do everything holding the camera at the same time. Let's see. I'll put that underneath. Our lemon. This is a good thing. I'm pressing down with the heel of my hand on the lemon. That helps, before you slice it, that helps release the juices, okay? So that way when I open it, it should be very easy to squeeze the lemon juice out. And where am I gonna put it into? So I'm gonna put it into a liquid measuring cup, and that way I can remove any seeds if I have any. So here's our paring knife. I'm gonna cut it in half, and I need two hands to do it, so I'll be back.